Good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Folari. Hope you had a great weekend. Okay, um, quite a number of things have been happening. Um, you know, the president is uh, away. We've just been watching him on local television here uh, in Germany and um, even in our sub region in our region here uh, in West Africa um, serious uh, election the serious political activity Liberia you know had its second round of elections you know and um, we now have in Liberia a president elect in the uh, person of um, the former vice president to uh, Madame uh, Selif Johnson, Joseph Boakai, 78, who is now the president-elect. Now, the interesting thing about this, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll come to that as soon as I've introduced uh, my guest. Uh, my guest is uh, a former ambassador, former, former Nigerian deputy permanent representative to the United Nations, Ambassador Usman Sarki. Uh, good morning to you, Your Excellency. Thank you very much, sir. Good morning. It's a pleasure to join TVPC program this morning. Thank Indeed. you. Thank you very much for being available for us. Um, I, I imagine a, a, lo a number of people will be uh, quite um, uh, optimistic and excited, perhaps, uh, about the example that uh, West Africa, indeed Africa, got in Liberia, where uh, the president there, uh, President uh, George uh, Weir, has set an example for Africa in conceding victory to you know, his opposition challenger, the former vice president of the country under you know, uh, Madame Johnson Sirleaf. And um, the interesting thing about this is that it was such a narrow margin of victory. Uh, we are told that 50.9% that is what the, uh, the president-elect won by, to the um, uh, incumbent president's 49.1%. Uh, I mean, that is, a nar is the narrowest of margins. Yet, we have the report that President Weir, even before the completion of counting, had decided that there was no way he could make up the difference necessary to win. And before the official result, he had called... You know, uh, he had called um, the president-elect, now president-elect, and had congratulated him. I thought that was a refreshing change for Africa. So I wanted to ask you, Mr. Ambassador, uh, d does this signify that um, a, a change is in the offing in Africa? Well, uh, thank you very much. Let me commend you all for addressing this issue of election in West Africa and in Liberia in particular, which is one of the oldest independent countries in our region. Indeed. Just for the information of uh, your audience or the viewers, Liberia was established or became independent in 1860, exactly 100 years before Nigeria got her independence. So it is very interesting that today, Liberia is living up to expectations in leading the democratic process in our region by actually belying the concept of coups, incessant coups, and other uh, unauthorized, unconstitutional changes of government mm -hmm. that seem to characterize the West African region, unfortunately. Uh, Liberia's election and the concession or conceding of uh, the elections, the victory to the uh, former Vice President Bokai, is a, is a turning point in the democratic advancement of our region. This is because Liberia may be a small country in terms of population, only about 9 million people, but whether it's a small country or large country, what matters is precedent, what matters is example, and what matters is integrity of the process. I have read the congratulatory messages sent by the United States Department of State by the European Union, by African Union, and other uh, organizations and partners. All of them pointed to the, number one, the integrity and credibility of the electoral process. Secondly, e e e even President Tinubu, as head of ECOWAS, even President, our President Tinubu. Oh, yes, yes, exactly. In fact, uh, Aju Ring Lele sent me 
personally the congratulatory message of Mr. President, which I thought is something very uh, important in terms of the leadership position that he is holding today in, uh, in ECOWAS, as chairman of ECOWAS, and also his persistent and insistent echoing of rule of law, constitutionalism, and democratic process. And I think it's very important that Nigeria has taken the lead in congratulating both former President Weir and the incoming President Bokae and congratulating the people of Liberia for this achievement. Uh, if we are to draw a parallel between Nigeria and Liberia, it will be what happened in 2015 when His Excellency President uh, Goodluck Evelyn Jonas and TCFR graciously conceded to the incoming president who won the election, that is President Muhammadu Buhari, His Excellency TCFR. So in Nigeria, we have set a precedent happily. But in other areas, I think what we need to do is to fine tune and perfect our electoral process, number one. And number two, the way officials come into office. There is a lot of contention and disagreements in terms of the way people uh, come to office, the election, the swearing in, and afterwards, you have appeal courts and other legal processes that either nullify or reverse or put into question the validity and integrity of both the process and the election themselves. So we need to, we are, we are a big country, I, I, I allow that, but even big countries can learn some things from smaller countries. Indeed. So it is very important for INEC and for Nigerian politicians and especially political parties to borrow a leaf from what has happened in Liberia. Let us not be too arrogant and too full of ourselves that we cannot learn from other people. We must know that Liberia was established long before us. And now they are coming back to their senses in terms of having peaceful democratic transition in the country as the fundamental prerequisite, fundamental corollary to development, to peace and security, and to the progress of democracy. So I'm very happy about the turn of events. Uh, the Unity Party, UOP, which was led by uh, President Elect Bokai, and the conference, the CDC, that was led by uh, George Weir, did not actually break into fights uh, across the country. Only a few incidents were reported in about four or five provinces that led to minor injuries and hospitalizations of some people. Otherwise, the observer missions judge the elections across the board as fair, transparent, clean, peaceful, and with a lot of maturity. And I think it is very important for us to highlight this always, especially you in the media, like GBC, for Nigerians to know that elections are not do or die affairs, and that people can win, people can lose. Political parties can win and lose, and yet the country must go on. So that is the lesson that we should learn uh, from what has happened in Liberia. In, in, indeed. And um, uh, President uh, uh, Weir, President George Weir him, himself, um, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. and as you know, uh, he had conceded even before the official uh, uh, declaration of results. And uh, one, one is still surprised that uh, such President Tinubu uh, noted his statesmanship and um, his undiluted patriotism uh, in, con in conceding victory because the margin was ever so narrow, 50.1%. So <laughs> the other guy had 49 point, uh, uh, what, what is it now? 49.1%. So uh, the president, our president, had commended this and noted that what President Weir has demonstrated is that the outcome of elections in West Africa uh, need not lead to strife and unrest and uh, all sorts of, you know, Anogo Giri, interminable court cases. Uh, as you said, Ni Liberia has had its problems, but it is still, I think, the oldest independent African uh, country in Africa. 
And I think it rose up to the occasion this time around, and President Tinubu uh, noted this in, in his uh, congratulatory message. Yes, exactly. Uh, I think, you know, President Tinubu has a lot of work to do in actually uh, advancing democracy in our region. You remember last week he was in Guinea-Bissau, and I think he has gone to that country two or three times in the course of his uh, presidency. Uh, Guinea-Bissau is a fragile country in terms of the strength of its democracy, with arrested military and uh, very uh, active opposition. So his concern with Guinea-Bissau should actually be translated to other countries in, in West Africa so that Nigeria's presence can balance the situation in those countries and indicate to them that we have their welfare at heart and mind and we will do everything possible in order to defend their democracy and advance the interests of their people. Now, uh, in Liberia, His Excellency President Tinubu has also taken the lead in congratulating the government and the, the country and the people. Now, George Weir, the, you have referred to the very slim margin of the victory by uh, Bokai. George, you, you remember it was the first round of elections was held on October 10th. That's right. And, uh, in, according to uh, the Liberian electoral law, is that you have recourse to a second uh, run of election, in the presidential election only, but in the parliamentary election, which also took place at the same time with the presidential election, about uh, half of the Senate you know, was re-elected. So it was first past the post, as far as the Senate was concerned. But in the presidency, because there was no clear victory in the first round of October 10, they have to now hold the second round That's right. November 14. And that was what happened. So President Weir read the sign. He did not have a clear majority in the first round as an incumbent president. And in the second round also, no matter how slim the margin was, he could not make the required 50% or more. And mm -hmm. sagaciously, and I believe was in conclave with his advisors, they came to the understanding that their time was up, the game was up, that he should give up. And very manly, courageously, and in a sportsman-like fashion, he came out even before the final collation and announcement of the results to congratulate uh, Vice President Elect Bokae and consider defeat. And I think that is the essence of democracy. It is. It what is. we need to learn in Nigeria is for our political parties, first and foremost, to follow their own rules, their own constitutions, to abide by those, and then to follow the electoral law in Nigeria. If that is done, Divisive utterances, the record to cause regularly, sometimes even with very on, on flimsy excuses and grounds, can be avoided. Uh, here, I have to point out that a lot of unnecessary dust was raised around the victory of President Bola Nutinu, which should not have actually been so. If we are better organized in terms of, of our elections, and electoral processes. I do hope all of us, both the ruling party, the opposition parties, and the general populace in Nigeria will learn something from that. That is, not to take democracy as something solid and unbreakable. Democracy can be broken, democracy can be brought to its knees by discontent, by disgruntlement by argumentative dispositions, and by disagreeing with the laws of the land. We have reached a point in Nigeria to where people are even questioning the integrity of our courts. Yes. This is a highly inflammable and dangerous situation. Just yesterday, I, or this morning, I was reading on social media somebody accusing the court of uh, the court that is uh, undermining or challenging the decision of the court in regards to the uh, Plateau State governorship uh, election. Can't Nigerians give the court the benefit of the doubt and uh, assume that whoever sits on the judgment chair 
must have the modicum of integrity to be able to pass a judgment that is based on the evidence before him or her. Can't we do that? Can't people agree that every Nigerian who presents himself for election must have the fundamental right to do so and also must feel beholden to his country before presenting himself or herself for election? I think we have to draw a line to form the baseline of the type of his position we will bring to politics in Nigeria. Liberia has taught us that you can win and at the same time you can lose without breaking your country apart. Indeed. Without undermining the rule of law, without disturbing the peace, and without actually going out to create confusion in the land. What President George Ware did was actually something that is akin to what President Jonathan did. And both of them will be held in high esteem by their citizens and by Africans and the rest of the international community Indeed. as time goes on. Indeed. And um, uh, the president of uh, ECOWAS, you know, there have been so much, it, from his point of view, and indeed from all Africans' points of view, um, uh, unfortunate news of the coups, the change of governments by non-democratic means. And so this must be a real uh, beacon of hope. Um, so much so that when President Tinubu was congratulating Liberians, uh, especially when he was congratulating both the incumbent president, uh, President George Weir, and the president-elect, uh, you know, uh, president-elect Joseph uh, Boakai, um, he also congratulated the people of Liberia and thanked them. He thanked them in his message that, was, uh, that the president sent. I uh, thank the people of Liberia for peacefully exercising their rights and uh, implore them to remain steadfast in the pursuit of democracy. Now, where this resonates is the fact that in 2017, um, the, pres the incumbent president, George Weir, uh, he actually won by 62% of the vote. 62%. Yeah. And now the people yeah. of Liberia have now said that, okay, well, there were there's there so many circumstances. There were allegations of corruption in government, uh, the promise that uh, they had expected, uh, they didn't see, and all of that. But the people now said, fine, from that 62% with which you won, well, this time, uh, we're not giving you more than 49.1%, and yeah, the yeah. country did not was not torn apart. So it was in that sense, I imagine, that the president was congratulating all of Liberia, the people, who had, it was the people who, who actually gave this mandate uh, by their votes. And uh, President uh, Weir had actually gone on air and had enjoined all of his supporters to follow his example and support the winner. I mean, it was almost as if, are we still in Africa? Are we still in Africa where people want to badmouth us? Now, this, this yeah. has happened. Yes, uh, I think, you know, uh, for a change, uh, pleasantly, I must say, we have this positive report now. Uh, apart from the very dismal spectacle we have seen in Niger Republic, in Burkina Faso, mm -hmm. in Guinea, and uh, in Mali, where military hunters have taken over forcefully. Yes. And before then, I must say, where uh, elected presidents wanted to subvert the constitution by introducing tenure elongation that destabilized the system. So uh, on both uh, issues, President Tinubu has spoken against both tenure elongation by supposedly elected presidents who changed the constitution to continue, and also military coups by people entrusted to defend the president and the country and the constitution. So uh, it's no surprise that His Excellency President Tinubu has appealed the sense of patriotism of people, particularly congratulating Liberian people. Democracy is essentially about the people. Indeed. One, one moment. I beg your pardon, Your Excellency. I beg your pardon for interrupting yes. you, but let me bring on Mohammed in Abuja who wants to join the program. Good morning to you, Mr. Mohammed. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, and then I greet you, I guess. Okay. Uh, for reminding you that George Weah is not the first to set this example. 
So for that, I want you to correct that your headline. George Weah is not the first to set the example of calling his uh, uh, his winner or his opponent before even the election is concluded. Jonathan, Jonathan is the first African leader to call his opponent before even the election was uh, concluded. Even INEC did not even announce the result. He called. But this one, George Weah, he has to wait for their INEC to announce the result. And uh, that only is for that. Then uh, there, is a, there is a Twitter, a Twitter handle that I used to follow uh, on social media. And he's a full supporter of uh, Peter Obi. He, was, he, he tweeted last two days that President, uh, President Tinubu was rushed to Germany for hospital. I want to remind him that today uh, President Tinubu was live addressing the, 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 the German uh, whatever uh, 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 Congress that they are doing there. So if you see him is in the meeting there, not in the hospital. Please, let's behave well in Nigeria. Let's wish our leaders uh, good every time. Let's pray for our leaders. We should not be wishing people there every time. That is how some of them did to Buhari, and Buhari is still in the arena, uh, shining and um, progressing. Please, let's be, let's be, let's be positive in, in our country every time. We should not be always wishing our leaders uh, uh, bad, please. That is my advice. Thank you, and have a nice deliberation. <laughs> well, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mohammed. Um, I think w the point you were making is that we should not be selling ourselves short. After all, we shouldn't forget uh, the President Goodluck, Ebele Jonathan uh, example uh, as well. But you see, what our caption is simply saying is that, um, you know, George Weir uh, sets example uh, for Africa and uh, I don't think you can deny uh, that that is indeed what has happened. Uh, but thank you very much. Uh, nevertheless, I hear what you are saying. Uh, so, um, Ambassador, um, well, you heard his yes. interjection mm. that uh, we ourselves, yes. uh, there are times we have set an example. And, yeah, I guess you can't uh, wish away President uh, Goodluck Jonathan's example. But in the current climate uh, that you have just been talking about, political climate in Africa, uh, that it didn't go awry. Uh, I, I think that is what we are commending. We're commending the people. Well, well you, we're commending the people of Liberia, uh, who whose mandate was allowed to stand. Uh, they changed their mandate uh, in 2017. They said that George Weah should go to be to to state house with 62 percent of the vote. And then now in this one over the weekend, now they said by 49 percent, they say we're not too happy and that we now want to try the man that we, we didn't use the last time around. And um, yes, yes, yes. So that, let, so that, yes, go on, please. Yes, so the, letting the vote speak, uh, and that was where, that was probably why President Tinubu congratulated the people of Liberia as well for the peaceful way in which they, you know, conducted the election. Yes, uh, President Tinubu as a Democrat, he knows and he realizes that democracy is all about the people, the choice of the people, the decision of the people, the mandate of the people. And if you remember, his electoral mantra was, on your mandate, I stand. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that was his uh, the campaign slogan of President Tinubu. And uh, the mandate he was referring to is that of the people. And he respects that opinion of the people. And that's why throughout his discussions, his comments, he always appeals to the people for their better sense of judgment. And in the case of Liberia, his address to the people of Liberia, I believe, if I may respectfully recommend, that as chairman of ECOWAS, he should also attend the inauguration of President Bokai and send the same message to the people of Liberia, congratulating them on their patriotism, on their enthusiasm to uphold democracy, and for the peaceful way the transition had taken place. I think that would give a lot of confidence to the people of Liberia and reinforce the strength of the democracy in this country. If they see our Nigeria appearing on the same podium with their president elect being sworn in and delivering a goodwill message uh, for Nigerians. But that will depend on the invitation that he may receive mm -hmm. from the uh, government of Nigeria. Mm. Uh, that said, I think it's very important that, as the earlier the speaker Mohammed said, yes. Nigeria should not be deprecating and undervaluing the 
their leaders. It has become almost a bore in Nigeria today at every instance to condemn our leaders, to criticize our leaders blindly, to even insult and abuse them. This is not correct and this is not right. They, they cannot get the change that they desire for if they are not cooperative and if they are not actually wishing and praying well for themselves and for their countries. Right. Whoever becomes a leader does not become a leader by his own strengths, by his own machinations, by his own wiles and guides, but first and foremost by the choice and grace of God the Almighty. Indeed. It is God who makes leaders. It is God who appoints people and gives people the chance to serve. And if people serve, then they are doing God's bidding to serve well, to hold what is called amana or trust. And if they don't serve, they will be answerable to God because God gave them that trust to hold on his behalf to lead the people to safety and prosperity. So, and, and, and the same thing, people should realize that abusing and criticizing their leaders always will actually lead to a condition whereby what they are wishing on the leader will now fall on them. Indeed, become so a self-fulfilling prophecy. We have to be metaphysical in some of these issues as Africans and people who believe in God and, and our faith. Indeed. So let us rally around, whether it's a local government chairman, whether it's a state governor, whether it's a member of House Assembly or House of Rep or Senate, whether indeed it's the president. Whoever sits in that chair bears a lot of responsibility. And we have to realize that responsibility is carried by him or her on our behalf. All so right, let, us be, let us be supportive of them, encourage okay. them, and not to really discourage them through incessant complaints, attacks, criticism, vilifications, and abuses. Okay. That will not take uh, All right, Mr. Ambassador. Um, 